Welcome back everyone, it's Sylvia from Aussie Scrapper and I'm participating in another Challenge Your Stash YouTube hop. I will link the other participants' channels down below so please go and check them out. And this month's challenge, if you haven't already guessed it, is Halloween. So I started off this challenge by picking this paper from Graphics 45 from 2011 and it's called The Magic of Oz and I absolutely love it. Now I wanted to use that title that's there as my most well, one of my titles. It's called it's got um, it says Wicked Witch of the West and I just had to use that and that's going to be my main inspiration and my starting point for this layout. Now a bit of history behind the photo. Where we live, it's a small community, and the children can't really go trick-or-treating due to the fact that everyone's on properties, and it's quite a distance between properties for the kids to walk, so they wouldn't really get very far, and a lot of the properties have got gates, and, you know, it's just not feasible. So as a fundraiser for the local school, the community gets together, and we have a big monster fest. And instead of the kids going trick-or-treating, what they had to do is they've got to do tricks to earn their treats so a bit of a twist and it's a lot of fun and in 2015 which is when this, this photo that I'll be scrapbooking was taken I dressed up as the witch and because I did my face all green I actually made the front page of the school paper which was quite funny now back to the layout so from the paper, I cut out my border, which says which Wicked Witch of the West. And then on my silhouette, I went and I found a couple of um, Halloween cut files and I cut them out. And the uh, spider webs I do land up using on all four quarters because I do like how that looks. And then at this point, I have no idea, so I'm just going to be playing with a few ideas. Unfortunately, the big spider web in the centre goes. So I'm going to back my photo on this black cardstock that I had in my stash there. It's just a scrap piece there. And that will frame my photo. I then went through my stash and I found some tissue paper. So I end up cutting that. And using the Mementos Elderberry ink all over again, I'm just going to use a makeup sponge to change this tissue paper from this very plain colour to a purple colour and I quite like the look of this but it did take a bit of time but hey it was very relaxing and scrapbooking is the way that I unwind at the end of a long day. So I won't bore you with this very long and tedious process I'll just cut to the end as I'm sure you all get the picture. I was really happy with the end product. Now unfortunately on this video you can't really see the lovely shade of purple that it is but it did turn out well what I say is absolutely beautiful. So what I did was I scrunched the, pitch, the, tissue, the tissue up for a bit of texture and then I start doing like a, like a fan effect. And unfortunately this piece of paper is not going to be long enough, so I have to go back and use the other piece and do the whole procedure all over again, which I won't bore you with. Um, you'll just see the end product. Once I put this layout back together again, and I'm looking at the spider webs, and I like the spider webs, but the orange is not bright enough for my liking so what I do is I go to my stash of distress inks and I'm going to be using the carved pumpkin colour and just using one of those blending tools from Ranger I'm just gonna ink my spider webs and I do that I do that I do this to all four spider webs and I go back and forwards till I get the depth of orange that I want. In the end I really like my spider webs and how they pop against the black and the purple. So I found this scrap of paper in my stash and there wasn't much left of it so I thought yes it's the right colour but not bright enough so I just get the Distress Inks in Carved Pumpkin and I apply it directly to the paper and then just give it a bit of a blend with the blending tool. And you would have seen that I cut out four pieces and they're each about half an inch in width. 
Once I finish inking my four strips, I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. And this, I'm just going to use it to frame this black piece of paper because I thought that it wasn't popping against the purple tissue paper that I had made. I really love how this orange border pops against the purple tissue paper once I adhere it all together. Off camera, I glued everything down to the page using some glue and double-sided tape. And I thought you didn't have to watch me stick everything down, so I just left that all out. And on my silhouette, I went back to my silhouette and I made the title, which is going to be Don't Make Me Flip My Witch Switch. I don't end up using the flip because it landed up being way too big for this layout, so I just end up binning that idea. I'm going to be using some alpha tiles from American Crafts to spell out the word don't and make. And then I'm going to be using the Kaiser Craft Dymo Alpha stickers and I'm going to use them to spell the words me and my. I will also be using the Creative Alpha stickers that I got from Kmart and they're going to make the word flip for me. So a few different products to make my very long title. I'm going to be using my Distress Ink in the colour Milled Lavender just to alter my tile stickers. They were just a bit too white, it was just too stark on the layer. So I decided that if I added a bit of purple, it would blend in more with the theme of the, the layout. Everything now gets a quick coat of gesso so that I can start doing a bit of mixed media on my embellishments and title. I gave everything a quick coat of gesso ready for some mixed media. And then I get my little spiders that I made on my silhouette and I give them a quick coat of paint with the Starlight's metallic paint in black. I had a few issues when I tried to alter the colour of my Kmart letters. I tried the Memento's um, elderberry colour but it didn't really stick to the gesso and everything so the next thing I try is my Distress Paints in Dusty Concord and that seems to do the trick. I'm just going to be using my modelling paste now to add texture to this broomstick. I want it to look like a piece of branch from a tree. I must admit I spent a bit of time on this broomstick because I wanted to give it a certain look of it and I used the heat gun to purposely bubble the modelling paste. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now I'm just doing the Add in some gelato and you can't really see here on the camera all the texture that's on this broom handle as well as the the broom bit. So I've just used uh, gelatos and I will go in with some of my watercolour paints and I work and work on this broomstick and handle and broomstick tool. I'm really happy with the effect. It was really worth the effort and I love getting messy and experimenting with my products so to me, it's not a problem at all. Oh yes, I also used some distress crayons in walnut stain. I forgot about that. And I just do that as a to add some shadow and highlights to certain areas. And that really makes it, I love it. I hope you can see how all the texture on that. And anyway, I hope it looks old and like a witch's broom handle for you. Let me know in the comments what you think of my broomstick. <laughs> It's onto my title now and I started off using the Distress Oxides in Wilted Violet and then I just spritz it with some water and I move on to the Distress Ink in Dried Marigold. As the title took me quite a while, what I will do in the interest of keeping this video short, I'll just show snippets of each step and, and then move along, otherwise we're going to be here till the cows come home. Once I put this title onto the layout, I don't really like the colour, so I, my next step is I move on to some gelatos. And I try this orange gelato that I had in my stash. Still not happy, and I move on to the Distress Paint that I had, that I used previously in Dusty Concord. 
I'm really struggling getting the depth of colour that I want. And this time I pull out my, what are they, my watercolour paints. And these do the trick. I start off with mixing two shades of purple and just adding a bit of water to it. And I like it. Finally, I am happy. It took a couple of coats to get the witch the depth of purple that I wanted. But it was well worth the effort. So I'm adding a bit of purple to the bottom of switch and then I go in with the orange colour using the same watercolour paints that I had. Off camera I, I glue everything to the layout, that's the title, the spiders, everything gets glued down. And then I find my kindy glitz which I haven't used in a really long time. So I decide that I'm going to add it to my witch and I love it. Absolutely love it. It was just the final touch that this needed. I'm just going to add some kindy glitz in orange to the switch and the title is done. I'm just going to add these stickers that I had in my stash from EK Success. And once they're down, what do I do? What do I do? I cannot remember. Oh yes, I just stick everything down and I stick down my broom handle and it's all done. Oh no, forgot I added the collage distress medium to the broom. Oh wow. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this layout. It um, was not what I envisioned but I had no idea what I was going to do anyway. So I'm really really happy with the outcome and I had heaps of fun making this. So here are some close-ups and till I see you next time. Thanks everyone for all your support. Bye.